Amen. Well, we're going to get into um, part number uh, two of In God We Trust. And can we just acknowledge that it's God who we trust? It's God who we trust. Can we, can we forget everything else just for a moment? And, and can we even just say that? Can we just say, in God we trust? And you could even personalize that and say, in God I trust, right? In God I trust. Just type that in uh, the Facebook comments, or if we got church online back up, type it on that. Um, but in God I trust, in God we trust. It's so important that we keep our focus on God right now. It's so easy to become under the influence of everything that else, else that's going on. And that's what we've titled this message today, Under the Influence. Under the Influence. It's so easy to be influenced by all the information that's going on, to be influenced by somebody who has a really strong um, position on, on, who, on, on, on political views. It's so easy to be influenced by commercials, by videos, by the internet, by social media. And if we're all honest, we follow these little rabbit holes, these rabbit trails, right, of things. And, and then we think a certain way or about somebody or about something or about something that's happening. And we forget as we get influenced in the wrong direction that God is who should influence everything about us all the time. Can I get an amen for that? It's God who we have to. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get us riled up a little bit. Is that okay? Okay, so on the count of three, you're, gonna, you're going to not, I didn't say Siri, I said a count of three, so Siri's talking to me. On the count of three, you're just going to shout out who you're going to vote for. Are you ready? No, 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 we're not going to do that. Like, I got your attention, right? You're like, no, no, right? Uh, online, please do not type who you're voting for. Do not, do not say anything. I just wanted to get your attention. <laughs> real quick. I knew that would, I knew that would get your attention. Um, there's an election in a couple of days and uh, it's one of the most uh, polarizing times in our nation's history. There's so much going on. I don't need to go down the list, right? I don't need to go down the list of, 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 of the political battle debates and heat and, and positions and, and COVID and, and, and hurricanes and, and fires and, and riots and, and, and racial injustice, like we don't need to go all down that, but we just know that there's a ton going on. There's a ton going on. And, and because there's so much going on, I think this message is perfect timing because we are so easily, again, influenced by all that's going on. It affects our emotions. How many have emotionally been affected by everything that's going on? Right, and we, we, we see the news. We see uh, what's going on. We don't know what to believe. We do know what to believe. We believe them, but we don't believe them. Then we stop believing them, and then we believe them again. And we, we, we're just like crazy right now under being influenced by all kinds of things. And um, I'll just acknowledge uh, that your opinion is right, and everybody else is an idiot, right? So... That's kind of how you think right now. No, that's not how you, maybe, maybe some of you might be thinking like, I'm right, and if they're wrong, I'm not going to be their friend anymore. And if they vote for them, and if they vote this way, they're, they're, I can't believe that they don't have a brain, right? You're thinking that in your head. Let's just stop. Let's just stop, okay? And let's just acknowledge that regardless of what happens, God is still in control. Can we, can we just say that? And what we have to do, is we have to do what 1 Peter 5, 6 says. And 1 Peter 5, 6 says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Can we just let that sink in for a moment? Let's humble ourselves in this time of craziness, in this time of I think I'm right and I think they're crazy, in this time of everything is, is nuts, can we just humble ourselves before God to just take a moment and say, God, I, I, I've been completely in, under the influence of everything else and I'm distracted right now. That we are under God. If you're online, just type under God. I am under God, right? As, as, how do we as Christ followers, how do we as Christians 
live under God in a culture that's increasingly hostile. So let's talk about that for a minute. I've got an I've got a, a, a image that I want to show you. What are you under? And it's a scale from 1 to 10, right? It's a scale from 1 to 10. And you could say that uh, on a scale, if I'm on the one side, I'm really under the influence of culture. But if I'm closer to 10, I would say that today I'm more closer to being under the influence of God. That's what we're going to rate ourselves in. Now, we all know this before I even get too far into this. If you're a one, you're pretty much the devil. So just don't you're not a one, okay? And if you're a 10, you're not God, so you're not perfect. So let's just go, let's just say two to nine. How about that? Two to nine, because we're neither the devil as much as you um, think your kids are or the way you act on the week. No, um, or we're neither perfect, but we're somewhere in between. Is that fair? Is that fair, everybody online? Okay, so when it comes to who you're under the influence of, think about it for just a moment. When it comes to social media, let's just talk about social media. On a scale from one, well, again, ten, maybe two to nine, are you more influenced by what you see online or are you more influenced by what you see by in God's word or, or, or under the influence of what God would say? How would you rate yourself? And I'm not asking you to give me a number. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. Or I'm not asking you to type it in the, the notes either if you're online and, and the comments. All I'm asking you to do is think about where I'm at. How much social media content, whether good, political, bad, spiritual, whatever, and how much is it influencing me right now? What's influencing me? How about entertainment? What kind of entertainment has been influencing you? And again, because of quarantine and because of uh, lockdowns and because of limited times and, and abilities, maybe you found yourself entertained um, by a lot of Netflix, by a lot of YouTube, by a lot of Hulu, right? By a lot of uh, these streaming YouTube TV, right? And, and, and you, um, maybe you found yourselves watching things that you shouldn't be watching. And you would say, man, right now I'm like on a two, right? Or a three, because I, 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 there's been so much time in my day, or I had so much time before I started watching things that might send me in the wrong direction with my, my, my thoughts, right? Or maybe you're somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I kind of mix it up with some sermons during the week, and then I like to watch some, uh, some, some craziness, like sometimes, right? Um, or maybe you, you've kind of stayed really, tried to keep your mind uh, on God, and, and you're closer to that eight or nine or 10, or no, not 10, right? We're not perfect. Um, how about money, right? How, how does money influence you? How does money influence you? It, uh, Evie told me that the Amazon stopped showing up when I went back to work. So money was in, <laughs> you know, I was, she was like, it's weird. You went back to work and, and they stopped like knocking at our door every day, delivering stuff. I don't know. Um, but maybe you, you've gone through one of those seasons or you're in one of those seasons where it, it, you're, you, you, you spend and it just feels good, right? Because you, you, you just like, oh, it feels good to just, oh, I'm ordering it, right? And then you get the notification on your phone, somebody at your front door, and you're like, ooh, it got here, it got here, you know, whatever, right? Maybe, maybe um, we're using purchasing, right, things, buying things to, to fulfill a need, um, or to make us feel good in the moment, right? We, we all, come on, I'm, I have my hand raised right here, right? Any, anybody online do that, right? Um, how about um, just your self-worth? Uh, what do you let dictate how you feel about yourself? Is, are you letting society or, or social media um, uh, feel, cause you to, to feel like you have to use filters on everything to look prettier or to remove all your blemishes? He said, guardo un silencio. That's what my daddy said. Everybody, it, it got quiet, right? Um, or are you okay with who you are? And it's just like, whatever, boom, you know? Um, we're, we're all influenced in different ways. But just ask yourself, how am I doing under the influence? Here's, here's the crazy thing. And, and I hope that I say this the right way. Some of us don't even know uh, if we are influenced more by the world or the culture or God, like we're kind of confused right now. How many would say maybe, uh, maybe that's me, right? Maybe that's me. Um, now, have you ever been around a drunk person? Anybody? And, and I'm not saying you, I'm just saying like somebody, right? Um, under the influence of alcohol, right? That's, that's, and, and, and if you have ever been around somebody who's been under the influence of alcohol, um, it affects the way they think, right? 
It affects um, what they think is funny, right? They laugh. Maybe some people, some drunks, they laugh at everything. <laughs> Somebody falls. <laughs> you know, so they're just, just crazy like that. Um, the way they walk, right, effect, is affected. Um, and and uh, I didn't say this. This is maybe Pastor Craig, but um, they, it affects who's attractive, right? Anybody? Okay, like it seems like the more you drink, the more people are attractive, right? And then the more, the more people that are attractive. And then the more you drink, the more you think you're attractive. Right? Okay. <laughs> and the more you drink, the more, um, and, I'll, and I'll get off this here in a minute, the more you love people, right? You could like walk up to the total stranger, bro, I love you, man. Like you're like, you don't even know him. You met him like earlier that night, but you love him already, Right? Because you were sharing everything, all your deepest, darkest uh, trauma in your life. Anyway, anyway, so all I'm saying is the, it lowers our guard, right? We become more vulnerable. We're not always aware or they're not always aware that they're under the influence. And, and my question is, what if we're a little bit intoxicated by the culture and we're not even aware of it? And we're not even aware that some of what we say, some of how we think, some of our reactions to posts and political views and, and different things, it's just like it, it, that intoxication of, 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 of cancel, that intoxication of you're, you're not very smart if you do that or if you say that or that. You see what I'm saying? Instead of, instead of approaching it from a godly view, we're, we're a little intoxicated and we're not, we don't even realize it. We don't even realize it. Um, so how are we as followers of Christ going to live under a culture that's increasingly hostile while at the same time responding as God would want us to respond more on the bigger side of that scale than the lower side of the scale? How do we do that? We're going to talk about Daniel's life real quick for a few minutes. Um, Daniel, um, as you know, you may, you may know Daniel more from the Daniels and Daniel in the lion's den. We're not going to talk about that story today, but Daniel was raised um, worshiping the one and true God. Daniel was very faithful in, in his um, obedience to God. Uh, in, the, in, the, um, in, the, in the book of Daniel, we're going to read, and I'm going to give you a little context for where we're going here. King Nebuchadnezzar um, of Babylon, he destroyed Jerusalem. In, in, in just to give you context of what's going to happen, he burned the temple down. He wrecked the city. Right. And what he did to gain more power is that he took the best uh, prisoners, the, the brightest, the strongest, the best looking. And he intentionally his intention was to indoctrinate them into the Babylonian culture and, and train them to be future government leaders. He's like, all right, I'm going to destroy Jerusalem. I'm going to destroy your temple, but I'm going to take the best of the best and I'm going to indoctrinate them, influence them all the way from what we eat to what we think to how we govern to how we treat people and, and use the best of the best for their gain. And in Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, let's, let's read this together. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, and the nobility young men with, without any physical defect, handsome, sh uh, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them to a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter the king's service. So here you have the prisoners of Babylon, right? The Israelites, after they destroyed the, the Jerusalem, the city, the temple, and he grabbed all of these best of the best, and his intention was to change their language, to change how they were educated, to indoctrinate the Babylonian into in indoctrinate them into the Babylonian way of thinking, even to change their names, right? Because they were related to Yahweh. Their names were, were, were godly names. They were going to change their names into something that was more of a pagan um, belief into what they wanted them, their names to be, even changing their diet. 
Many of you um, uh, remember a while back Daniel's diet and all this was really popular because he refused to eat what the king was eating, but he, he changed his diet and, and people were following that. Not talking about that today, but um, that, that is where that comes from. He, to change the food that they ate, right? And under the Babylonian culture, they were going to think different. They were going to believe different. They were going to behave different. Um, and they were going to turn them away from how they were raised in the Jewish culture in Israel, the nation of God's people. And so how many know that we have an enemy that tries to do that to us all the time? We live in a world that tries to do that to us all the time. And again, that's why we're bringing up this subject. What are we influenced by? Because we want to be under God, not under the influence of culture and our minds and our hearts. And again, some, some of us, we don't realize areas where we're influenced more by culture than by God. And it comes out in us when we least expect it. And, and we want God to infiltrate our minds, our hearts, and not the culture. And here's the deal. The enemy, he's always on the attack. He's always going to try to lie to you, to deceive you, to seduce you, to get you into doing something that is the opposite of God, to be lower on that scale. And our job as Christians is to follow God. But you can't do it halfway. Because when you, when you do it halfway, you tend to have one foot here, one foot there. How many have been there? Um. You can't passively be a disciple of Jesus. You have to be intentional. Maybe you've heard that word. You have to be intentional about it. Um, Because you're never going to stumble into being holy. You're never going to stumble into being a strong, committed believer. Like, you're not going to be walking one day, trip over something, and say, whoa, I'm I'm really close to God right now. Like, that's not the way it works, right? It's not the, you you have to intentionally say, I'm going to do these things every day or every week, or at this time of the month, whatever, like, and, and this is going to keep my relationship with God strong. This is going to keep my faith strong. I'm going to meet with these people. I'm going to pray with my family, whatever it is, and this is going to be what keeps my area, uh, this is what keeps me strong. So, so here's what I want you to think about, because for some of us, and maybe you're online and, um, and this is the one time a week where you, you feel like you're connected to God. I love that you're here and maybe we're here, and maybe this is the one time a week where we connect with, it is, it's the only time we have service, but maybe, maybe after this, we, we don't do much as it relates to God, and if, if we're like that, or if we, cheat, if we treat church as just the check-in day, where we don't pray during the week, or we don't do other things during the week, we don't do anything else, it's almost like this, it, it, would, it would be like, well, I'm just going to, I want to be healthy, but I'm only going to work out once a month, it's not going to work, right? Once a week, a little bit better, but probably won't do much. Um, it, it would be like this. Well, I want a great marriage, so I'm, I'm going to be nice to Evie um, uh, just, one, just once a week. I'm going to be nice, right? Because that's my contribution, right? That would not work. Anybody? Amen, right? That doesn't, ladies, it wouldn't work doesn't work that way, right? You have to be nice every day and admit when you're not nice and apologize and, and humble yourself and, and, and let them think they're the, I mean, let them be the queen of, of, of that. Kidding, kidding, all right? Um, it doesn't work that way, right? You, you, uh, or, or sp- again, spiritually, just going to church for one hour a week and, and not really thinking about God after that, it, it, it won't work that way, um, Here's what Daniel did. He found himself as one of these prisoners, as one of these captives. And he did this in Daniel 1.8. He said, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. So one of the things that Daniel did was saying, all right, I'm in this situation. There are certain things that I'm not going to do because I know who I serve. I know who I am. And I know who the true God is. So one of the things I'm not going to do is I'm not going to defile myself with the royal food and wine that's being offered to me. The king said, eat food devoted to pagan gods. But Daniel, 
He predetermined, he predecided, and that's why I like he resolved that word. Again, predetermined, he, he thought about, he already knew, and that he is under God, and he didn't, um, and he wasn't going to do it. Now, there are certain things that Daniel didn't fight against, like when, when they changed his name, he didn't fight against that. He, he knew that the name was just something outward, an outward label. He knew who he was, right? All right, if you want to call me that name, that's fine. You can call me that name. Um, he didn't defend his name, but however, he defended God's name. So anything that came up against God, you know, it's like, like you can call me whatever you could be mad at me, but if you talk against God, then I'm going to get a little fired up, right? It's kind of like it, it, it's people that maybe um, they get mad at you or they do something to you. Hey, you could do whatever to me, but you touch my kid and it's on, right? Right? It's, it's kind of like that. And that's what Daniel was treating this situation like, call me whatever, but don't defile my God. And I'm not going to defile him because I know who I am. And I know what I'm here for and I know why um, I'm here. And so here's what we're going to do as, as Christians, as believers, to battle, to fight, to be on the offensive, to be intentional. I'm not going to ask you to do a list of things, um, but I want you to decide to predetermine at least one decision on how you're going to combat uh, the culture and live under God's influence versus the culture's influence. So there, there, there's a photo here I want to show you. To live under God, I've decided to. Now, I want you to just, we'll, we'll leave that up here for, for just about a minute or so. And I want you to think about this. I'm going to give you some I I examples. One of the things that um, I decided a long time ago as, as a Christian, and you know, when I was really young, I, I, uh, I, we, we started going to church when I was, I, I believe, Ten, nine, ten years old, something like that, I, and and I just loved God. I loved going to church, and uh, my parents started pastoring a church when I was fourteen. And one of the things that just kept that that naturally came out of me was just to be bold about my faith. One of the things that I and you could ask my mom. Um, I would always bring my friends to church all the time, and it was just something that I always lived out. And what I came to learn as 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 a as a kid and, and into my adulthood, that when I let people know who I am, whether it be through a t-shirt, right, a bumper sticker, or just meeting them, oh yeah, I, I, I pastor a church, or I go to church, or whatever, before all that, um, it immediately holds myself accountable for who I am. Is, is, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? And I, I resolved a long time ago that when people meet me, they would know within, the, within one conversation that I'm a Christian. And know, them knowing who I am would quickly help me defend who God is and make sure that I don't do something stupid. Does, does that make sense? And, and so maybe to live under God, I've decided to, for me, I've decided to let people know that I'm a Christian, to let people know who I stand for. That's something maybe um, for you, um, it's, it's time to have communion with God again in the form of reading, reading the Bible every day or listening to the Bible every day or, or doing a, a short devotion on the YouVersion Bible app. Maybe for you, it's to live under God and to live under his influence. I've decided to, or from today on, I'm going to open my Bible app and just hit the, the story of the day. It's like a little over a minute. It's, it's, it's an amazing short devotion. Maybe you start there. Or maybe before you used to read a chapter and you don't read a chapter anymore. You don't read at all. Um, maybe, maybe for you, that one decision to live under God's influence is to open the YouVersion Bible app every day for, for just a few minutes. That could be it. Um, for some of us, it's, it's giving, right? Maybe we said to live under God. Uh, God says that where my heart goes, my, uh, uh, where my money goes, my heart follows, right? And so your, 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 your money uh, goes towards God, and then your heart follows that, right? You tend to think about God when you give towards godly, towards, towards the kingdom of God. Your heart goes in the direction, right? And, and how many know when you, you, you have your, your heart in other directions, that's, that's because you're investing in that direction. And so, yeah, we got to save, we got to buy, we got to do all this stuff, but when, when our money 
goes in the direction of God. Our heart follows the direction of God. Maybe it's, it's church, and maybe um, you're online today, or you're listening to a rebroadcast, but you're not as consistent as you should be or you would like to be. Maybe to live under God, I've decided to attend church every week, right, to do everything I can. When I get that text from the church to click, to log on, or to show up, I've decided to, to commit myself in that way. Um, Jesus, when he came to this earth, he, he didn't come to the earth to build a government. He didn't say, I'm going to build a government here on earth so the gates of hell should not. Jesus said, I'm going to build the church so the gates of hell would not prevail. Um, maybe it's treating people lovely or lovingly, excuse me, on, on social media. Maybe to live under God, I've decided to treat people in a lovingly way on social media versus mute them or versus unfriend them or versus comment, really, you know, uh, whatever it is. I don't know. Maybe um, to speak words of life to those closest to you would be something that you resolve to do. Like you're going to encourage people, not gossip about people. You're going to say something encouraging, not, um, not discouraging. Well, it says learning to drive, and, and we, we do everything that we can to encourage him, not to discourage him. When we first started, and we had this conversation um, uh, when he started, uh, uh, has it been, what, six weeks or so, maybe longer? And I would freak out. I would, like, almost want to grab the wheel because he would drift over and, like, you know. And, and I, I began to make him really nervous, and, and it wasn't helping the situation. And I've learned to not do that. And he's gotten better. He's actually a great driver. He, he drove on the highway last night for the first time at night on 470. It was amazing. He did really good. And now it's just encouraging. And, and yeah, there's always things to get better at. Even, even those of us who've been driving forever, right? We have our bad habits. And uh, it's just nothing but encouragement. That was awesome. And, and, and last night we got home. And, uh, and Evie actually fell asleep. And I'm like, hey, if, if your mom fell asleep, she must be comfortable, right? Or just trying to make sure, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get away from it all. No. Um, uh, he, he, he's doing good. And, and we, all we do is encourage. That's cool. Made him a little, doesn't matter. You'll learn. You're going to get better, right? Encourage, encourage, encourage. Because it's so easy to pick out, especially when somebody's driving, ah, you're drifting to the, ah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's so easy to do that. But we encourage, right? And maybe you, you resolve to encourage your family. Again, 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. See, the culture says this, and, and we're going to finish here in, in just a couple minutes. The culture says this. Promote yourself. Put out your selfies, right? Try to get the likes. But God tells us, deny ourselves, right? Deny yourself before him. The, the culture says to consume. What can I get on Amazon today, right? Black Friday is coming, right? Um, prime day, deal of the day, right? There's always something to buy, right? Always. And God's saying, I want you to give. <laughs> kind of want you to do the opposite. You, you, instead of consume, give. Um, God, the culture says, well, just cancel them if they hurt you. Hate those who hurt you. Delete them if they hurt you. And God is saying, love those who hurt you. God is saying, love your enemies. <laughs> Whew. Okay. The, the culture says, pursue things. And God is saying, pursue me. Pursue God. The culture says live for now. Just living my best life now, right? YOLO. You only live once. But God is saying live for eternity. How's what I do today going to affect eternity? How's what I, gonna, how's what I do today going to help somebody into eternity? How's what I do today going to leave a legacy for when I'm gone? Because I don't know how long I have. How will I be remembered? 
Pursue happiness, the culture would say, but God would say pursue holiness. And I promise you, everything that we want, because God wants to give us the desires of our heart, but we have to put him first. And oftentimes we let the culture reverse that to where we are influenced in the wrong direction, and then God gets backburned. So, to close, um, next week, in a couple of days, there will be um, a new president, right? Or an elected president for the next four years, either the same one or a new one, right? There's only two choices for the next four years. And some of you will be extremely happy, and some of you will be extremely sad and mad, or there'll be a lot of different, there'll be a lot of different emotions. Um, but I want you to do this. I want you to make some predetermined resolutions that regardless of what happens, regardless of what happens, that you, um, you look to God and that you pray for our leaders. How many know that scripture says to pray for our leaders? If it wasn't the person that you thought it should, you still pray for them. You still pray for them. If it is, maybe it's easier to pray for them. I don't know. But I want you to, ahead of time, to get ahead of it. You know it's coming. Let's get ahead of it a little bit and say, God, here's what I feel and here's how I voted. And at the end of the day, you're still in control because we're citizens of heaven. We're ambassadors of God. And we need more. Um, here, here's what I would say. Let's commit ourselves more to God than our political party. Is, is that okay to say that? Let's commit ourselves to God more than who we side with, what we agree most with, who we embrace more. Because here, here's the deal, and I'll end with this. No matter which party holds office, our God still holds the world. Our God still holds the world. Can we pray? Lord, we, we come before you, Father, and we're so grateful, Lord, that we have you. We're grateful, Father, that your word reminds us to dial us back, to draw us back in, to bring us closer to you, to <laughs> reel us in, Father, like a fisherman um, casts the line and the bait is taken, and then just reel us back in, Father. Reel us back in. Lord, it's so easy right now in our current culture to get lost, to get influenced by everything but you. And Lord, you're reminding us today. You're in control of the world regardless of what happens. And the church, Father, your church, we as your church, um, nothing can stop it. We're still going to be here. We're still going to serve you. We're still going to love you. We're still going to help anybody possible. And so, Lord, I pray for each and every person listening that you would set our hearts at ease, you would set our minds at ease, and that you would help us, Father. In Jesus' name.